In the previous lesson, we saw how Bohr's theory stated that electrons travel or orbit around the nucleus in these fixed energy levels. These here are energy levels, these rings. And Bohr's theory described how electrons can move or transition between the energy levels. And he knew this because when an electron fell from say this fourth energy level to the second energy level here, then it would emit light. And Bohr could see this as a line on his emission spectra that he was studying. And if we had a different electron, say it was in the third energy level here and it fell to the second energy level, well, it would also emit light, but the frequency or the energy of that light would be different from the orange electron shown here. And it would be seen as a different line in the emission spectrum. So that was Bohr's theory. Now, as time went on and Bohr continued to study spectra and equipment got better, Bohr's theory started to fall apart a little bit, started to get a bit limited. And the first reason for this was that Bohr discovered once equipment got a little bit more um, accurate, that if he took an emission spectrum like this and he was to zoom in, that what he thought was an energy level here, what he thought was this, um, this orange line. So I'm just gonna shade in the background. So he had an orange line. When he was able to zoom in with better equipment, he could actually see that this wasn't one line, but it was made up of, sometimes it was made up of two or three lines very close together, like this. So it wasn't a single line. Once you zoomed in, you could see it was made up of more than one line. Now, Bohr was clever enough to realize, well, there's no way that there are, are more than two of these energy levels that close together that are that close in energy. So these three lines here are really close in energy. Okay, so really close in energy. And Bohr realized that these three lines couldn't be caused by electrons falling to three different energy levels. They're just too close in energy. So what Bohr's answer to this was, well, that each energy level must be made up of smaller sections. And he called these energy sublevels. These were energy, this was evidence that there was something called an energy sublevel. So these are areas within a main energy level, within one of these shells or these rings that are very close in energy, but they're slightly different. So it's like a, an energy level is a subdivision. It's a division or a subdivision of a main energy level. That's what we mean by an energy sublevel. It's a subdivision of a main energy level. These subdivisions will be very close in energy. That's why these lines are seen. And Bohr even mistake them for actually just one line. That's how close in energy they were. Okay, so we now understand this in a lot more detail. We understand what's going on. We understand that yes, the energy levels are made up of sublevels. Okay. And let's first of all, look at the main energy level. So this is the N equal to one. This is the one closest to the nucleus. It's the first energy level. This is the N equal to two energy level. It's the one second closest to the nucleus. This is N equal to two. This blue one here, this is N equal to three. And uh, this, let's do uh, purple. This purple one here, that's a bit thick, sorry. Let's draw this one as, this is N equal four. Okay, so these are, our, these are four energy levels. And as we move up, we increase the amount of energy that the electrons can have. So we say that energy is increasing. So the further away from the nucleus they are, the further out they are, we've got um, more energy. And what Bohr discovered, or what we now know, sorry, is that the number of sublevels that are in any of these energy levels is equal to the energy level number. So you see the way that N equal to one, that has the energy, the, the number there beside N is one, and that means it's got one sublevel. So the N equal to one is just made of one sublevel. N equal to two, well, the number on that is two, that's got two sublevels. N equal to three, how many sublevels do you think that has? Three. And n equal to four has four sublevels. Okay. So 
the, the number of the energy level tells you how many sublevels are, there are in it. That's the first thing to know. The next thing to know is, is that the first or the lowest energy sublevel in any main energy level is always given the letter S. Okay. So an example of this is that the n equal to one, its sublevel or its first sublevel is an S sublevel. So we give it the letter S to show that it's or to separate it from other types of sublevels. So we call this the 1s sublevel because it's found in the first energy level. So this is the 1s sublevel. And just the same way, well, we know that n equal to 2 has two sublevels, and we just told you that the lowest one or the first sublevel in every energy level is always s. So this here is the 2s sublevel. There is also a 3s sublevel. And this here is the 4s sublevel. Now, the n equal to 1 only has the 1s sublevel. There's no other sublevel there, so it's not divided into any other bits. Okay. Another thing to note is that the s sublevel can always only hold two electrons. So an s sublevel always holds two electrons. And this is why the first shell, if you like, when we drew the Bohr model of Bohr atoms earlier, we say it can only hold two electrons. Why? Because n equal to one, that first shell only has a one s sublevel. So it can only fit two electrons. Okay, the second sublevel in any main energy level is given the letter P. So we're going to draw the two P sublevels now. Okay, so in orange, the two P sublevels. Well, there are three areas in the 2p sublevel. So this is the 2p sublevel, okay? And a p sublevel can always hold six electrons. Okay, so hopefully you can see that the 2s sublevel, how many electrons can it hold? Well, it's the same as the 1s sublevel. S is always hold two, so two electrons. So hopefully you can see now, where that rule comes from when we were drawing Bohr models earlier, we always say, well, you can put eight electrons at the second energy level. And we put them like this, these eight Xs, and we say it's full there. Well, why? Well, now the n equal to two sublevel is full because we've only got two sublevels, and it's the 2s and the 2p. So the n equal to two energy level is now full. What about the three, the n equal to three sublevel? Well, n equal to three sublevel also has a 3p sublevel. So there we go. Again, it's got three sections, and this is the 3p sublevel, like that. Now, I told you that n equal to 3 has the number 3, so it's got three sublevels. We've only done two so far. So the next sublevel that we find inside main energy levels after uh, p is used up, we then go into, we use the letter d. Now, something really unusual happens here. The 3D sublevel is higher in energy than the 4S. So when I'm drawing this, I'm going to draw it above the 4S. So a really strange thing, just the way it works. So actually, we've got a section of the fourth energy level that's lower in energy than some a part of the third energy level. So it's a bit strange. And I'm going to draw five sections to the D area. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is what we call the 3D sublevel. And D sublevels can hold 10 electrons. Okay, so that's now the n equal to 3 sublevel dealt with because we know there's 3, sorry, n equal to 3 energy level dealt with because we know if it's n equal to 3, there are 3 sublevels. And I've just drawn them in blue the 3S, the 3P, and the 3D. Right, what about the for the n equal to four energy level there. We've only got one so far, and that's the 4s. So what comes next? Well, that would be the 4p. And the 4p is higher in energy than the 3d. So there is the 4p. So the 3d sits in between the 4s and the 4p. Above that, then, we have higher in energy. We have the um, 4d, like this. One, two, three, four, five. This is the 4d. 
And then, believe it or not, there is a fourth sub-level here, and that is, I'm going to draw seven sections here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is the 4F sub-level. And we're not going to worry about Fs. We really just need to know about Ss, Ps, and Ds, but I just wanted to show you that there is actually a 4F as well. And uh, believe it or not, there is also an N equal to five energy level and an N equal to six one. And it can see how complicated it's gonna get there. And we're not gonna worry too much about that, okay? Um, because we don't really need to know that. But there is an N equal to five, there is an N equal to six, and you can see how this diagram will keep going. But let's build it up again from the start. N equal to one only has one sub-level because the number is N equal to one, one sub-level. And it's always, the first one is always an S. So one S. N equal to two, the number is two. It's got two sublevels. It's got the two S and the two P. Two P is higher in energy than the two S. And the second sublevel is always got the letter P. N equal to three, the number is three. It's got three sublevels. We've got the three S, the three P, and the three D. N equal to four has four sublevels. The four S is actually lower in energy than the three D. This becomes important later on when we start doing something called an electronic configuration. We need to remember, we need to fill up the 4S sublevel before the 4, 3D. More on that later. We've got the 4S, the 4P, the 4D, and the 4F. Okay, you see here where I've got that diagram drawn out here. Okay, so probably a, a better diagram if you guys want to actually study it or you guys want to make a drawing of that. That there is probably better to go off than the one I've drawn. Okay. All right, so you're ready now to, uh, to do some practice questions on that. So two, two, four to two, three, five. So I want you to pause the video and do that. Oh, my guys, you know where you, have, you guys have this booklet. Go ahead, open it up and do these questions. I'm going to correct them tomorrow. Thank you.